Hey there, happy Resurrection Day. You know, I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, it seems like this virus and this uh, being cut off from society has been like being put in a dank, dark tomb for the last three or four weeks. And my wife and I, having probably had the coronavirus during this whole period of time, have really felt cut off from society. We felt like, when is this going to be over? When is this ban going to be lifted? When are we going to be able to go out and see you all again and have and interact with people? But the funny thing about this virus is it didn't just affect us. It didn't even just affect our area. This has been the first time in my memory uh, of my lifetime that something has had a global effect. So that people all over the world are feeling the same thing because of the effects of this virus. And everybody has been waiting until the time when, they, when we could be declared uh, free from it. We could go out into society. But you know what I think? I think that God was doing something here. I think God was giving us a, a great big giant metaphor to lead us right up to Easter. Because as we know, Jesus was crucified on a Friday. He was put to death. His dead body was taken down and it was laid in a dark, dank grave and sealed up. And it was there from Friday night all the way through Saturday until uh, Sunday morning. And Sunday morning, the resurrection took place. Jesus came forth out of the grave, alive. And that is the hope of the resurrection for all of us. And, you know, no one was expecting it. His disciples weren't expecting it. They were, they were hiding in, in a room, hoping that they wouldn't get arrested. The women were expecting it. The women came to the, came to the graveside on Sunday morning. Uh, to, to where the tomb was so that they could anoint the body. Of course, the Jews weren't expecting it. The Romans weren't expecting it. No one was expecting it. But we, they should have had a little length and they should have had a clue because when Jesus was living, he said it over and over again. I, I will be put to death and in the third day I will raise from the dead. But no one could quite fathom it. They, people should have also had a little bit of an idea because time and time and time again, when Jesus came across a dead body, what did he do? He raised it from the dead. Jesus was a good shepherd. As a matter of fact, remember one time I told that he came up to a, a, a funeral procession. The boy was being carried out of town where he was going to be buried. Jesus came up. He spoke the boy back to life and the boy sat up. He sat up and he began to speak. And let me tell you, when you're conducting a funeral and if the body sets up, Funeral's over, baby. You don't need no funeral. Jesus did that with a young girl. And then, of course, he did it with Lazarus. Lazarus, what happened to him? He had died and been in the grave four days. Four days. Jesus said, open up the tomb. Everybody thought it was great, crazy. Even his sister, uh, Martha, said, Jesus, are you sure you want to do that? By this time, he stinketh. By this time, he's thinking, Jesus said, open up the grave. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And there comes Lazarus hopping out in his grave clothes because Jesus has power over death. And it, people should have had a clue that Jesus, when he said, I was, I'm the bread of life, he meant, I'm the bread of life. And so here we are, ready to celebrate the the. Easter season, and we're going to start out with something we're going to talk about for the rest of the time today, and that is our confidence that He is risen. He is risen. So we're going to say it three times. I'm going to say, He is risen, and you're going to say back to me, He is risen indeed. And we're going to get louder with each one. So are you ready? Here we go. Number one, He is risen. Yeah. Second time, He is risen. Right on. And finally, He is risen. Sweet. He is risen indeed. Okay, so what is the big deal about Easter? What's the big deal about Resurrection Day? I'll tell you what the big deal is, and that is that Christianity stands or falls on one event. If you can disprove, disprove this one event, the rest of Christianity goes away. As a matter of fact, before any of the New Testament was, was written, any of the life of Christ was risen, before written, before any of that happened, People were becoming Christ followers. People were becoming uh, disciples of Christ. And Christianity was spread, was beginning to spread all over before any of the New Testament was even written because Christianity stands or falls on one event. You see, Jesus could have lived the, all, the life that he did and he could have died on the cross. And you know what? 
Christianity would have come to a stop if that was the end of the story. There were many people that did great things and then were, were martyred and their stories did not outlive them. But Christianity continued on. As a matter, of fact, as a matter of fact, it spread like a virus all over the world and it was based on one fact. And that one fact Paul writes about in a, in a letter he wrote to the Corinthians. He said this, and if Christ has not been raised, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. If Jesus Christ did not raise from the dead, then Christianity is over. We may as well stop and go do something else because we're wasting our time. Christianity stands or falls. Our faith stands or falls. Our hope for eternity stands or falls on what event? The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.